From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American Original. For over two decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. If, for such a small word, it packs a wallop. If I live to 100, if Social Security isn't enough, if my heart gets broken, if she says yes. We believe if should never hold you back. If should be managed with a plan that builds on what you already have. Together, we can create a personal safety net, a launching pad for all those brilliant ifs in the middle of life. You can call on our expertise and get guarantees for the if in life. After all, we're MetLife. Issue one, our lackey whacked. The death of our lackey is a major blow to Al-Qaeda's most active operational affiliate. He took the lead in planning and directing efforts to murder innocent Americans. Anwar al-Awlaki is the man widely regarded as the most dangerous terrorist in the Al-Qaeda network. Awlaki was killed on Friday by a U.S. Predator drone. Awlaki was born in New Mexico, so he was automatically a citizen of the United States. He was also a leading Al-Qaeda cleric who masterminded a range of terrorist acts. Question, how big a blow is Awlaki's demise to Al-Qaeda? Pat. I think it's very big, John. He is believed to be the inspiration or the source of the Fort Hood killer who killed 13 American soldiers and wounded 29 down at Fort Hood in the largest massacre on an American military base. He is, I don't know that he's the operative chief of Al-Qaeda, but he is the principal public voice, I almost in that part of the world and certainly in Yemen. And so that is a big victory for the United States. But I'll tell you this, John, the important thing is that the United States has indicated ever since Osama bin Laden was taken down that they can run down and find and shoot and kill using drones or airstrikes an incredible number of al-Qaeda leaders. It is astonishing. I think they must have gotten a huge volume of intel from Ob Osama's computers or somewhere else because they've been killing them left and right. And the al-Qaeda reports inside al-Qaeda are saying all our guys are being killed. Do you think that this uh, launders the appearance of the drone I don't killing, know. killing people? I don't people? know if exactly if a drone did it. You hear an American fighter plane at, as of when we're, when we're taping here, excuse me. But I think the United States has the capacity basically to run down where they are, to find them, and then to target and kill them with extraordinary facility, far more than we could do under George W. Bush. The drone has a bad history of killing innocent people. The drone has collateral damage. Any bomb is killing, oh, going to kill innocent me. women is and the, children. Is that what we're reducing it to? Collateral damage? Eleanor. Well, uh, the drone killed a very guilty person this time. Um, it's not as symbolic as bin Laden, and most people have not heard of this gentleman, but because he's an American citizen, he speaks English, he's a very charismatic figure, he has a foot in both cultures, he's been recruiting American citizens to become uh, terrorists, and he exchanged emails with the Fort Hood mm -hmm. uh, terrorist um, shooter. Uh, he helped coach the underwear bomber and the New York Times bomber. He's a, he's, he's, a, he's a terrorist. So, And I think what is surprising, I think, to some people is how far Obama has gone in the use of these drones, much further than President Bush. And I think the technology, uh, along with uh, the willingness of this president to pursue these people, has produced a, a winning record of terrorist kills, if you will. There'll be some uh, pushback from civil libertarians, and I'm glad they're speaking up, but I think this is a justifiable oh, let's, killing. Let's see if we can bring this to life. President Reagan, in 1981, issued Executive Order 12333. Buchanan was there working for him, otherwise known as the Assassination Ban. Here is the language of the law of the land. No person employed by or acting on behalf of the United States government shall engage in or conspire to engage in assassination. No agency of the intelligence community shall participate in or request any person to undertake activities forbidden by this order. Unquote. Question. Was it legal? I ask you, uh... Liz, for President Obama to order the assassination of an American citizen. 
Well, I think the White House would tell you that they derive their legal authority for any operation like this from um, uh, the, what can Congress passed in the wake of 9-11, basically authorizing uh, the United States to defend itself against the Al-Qaeda network. And so they think they have plenty of um, uh, legal cover for this type of operation. And I think if you look at where the American public stands at large, I don't think there's going to be uh, a widespread uh, sense of outrage for, for something like this. Um, I think the more interesting thing to raise, however, to some extent, is when you look at the success that this White House has had um, in terms of uh, combating al-Qaeda and on you know, foreign policy in general, um, why isn't uh, the president getting more credit for this? And you hear some Democrats actually in the wake of what happened uh, uh, today saying, you know, maybe the White House needs to start doing a little more chest thumping in the manner of George W. Bush, perhaps, or at least drawing a little more attention to the fact that, that they've actually had a run of real success on the foreign mm -hmm. policy front. Mm -hmm. uh, more. Well, I mean, whatever else you want to say about it, it, there certainly is a moral justification for going after somebody like this. And we are involved in a totally different kind of warfare than we've ever experienced before. We're involved with a group of terrorism who, who use any means to, to disrupt whatever they can in the United States. So I have no qualms about with the fact that we did it. And I think it's wonderful that we are taking out some of their leadership. And I hope that this keeps them suppressed and on the run instead of attacking us. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely justified. Mm -hmm. I, wish and I don't think chest thumping on this would be necessarily appropriate. Uh, I think the president does have a good record on national security, and that kind of flips the polls, because mm -hmm. normally that's a weakness for Democrats. Mm -hmm. But it, given the job situation, that's the number one Jack. issue on everybody's mind. I do you wish. You know that uh, al Laki was an American citizen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John, yes, he was. He is an American. And, he, well, he, and was. he was inciting terror well, against American, American citizens. citizens. John, so. but here's the thing. I do wish the United States... Well, the president doesn't say this yeah. is a war on terror. But yes, he does. He doesn't put it under no. that category. No, he, yes, he, he does not. He avoids that. War on, it's a war on al-Qaeda. But I do wish the United States had formally declared war on the al-Qaeda network and people who are, you know, si or do, who are basically engaged in these activities, because this is an enemy uh, at a time this is a of little, war. This is a little uh, long from Ron Paul, but I want to read it. Uh, I don't think that's a good way to deal with our problem, namely this is uh, killing. Mm -hmm. We won't call it an assassination because there's a law against that. Al Qaeda, there's a specific law, as we know. Al Awlaki was born here. He's an American citizen. He was never tried or charged for any crimes. No one knows if he killed anybody. We know he might have been associated with the underwear bomber. But if the American people accept this blindly and casually, that we now have an accepted practice of a president assassinating people who he thinks are bad guys, I think it's sad. Well, what I about that? I, I don't think this was done casually, and I do expect there will be some pushback, and I'm glad Ron Paul and others are raising uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the questions, because I don't think you want to do it casually. But this is, but this is this is somebody who we are all better off without him uh, continuing in this uh, universe. Do you, know, you think the CIA was in there? Helping oh, this I look American. Of course they were. Of course, of course they, they were. were American intelligence. I, mean, I don't know as of right now. My guess is, John, is the Americans carried this thing out. I don't know who else can handle something like this. But again, I, I, I agree with Ron Paul raising these issues, but I also agree that the President of the United States, this guy is an enemy yeah. in a time of uh, war, and could, it's known, and they've got the evidence. Who can tell me anything about, about Yemen? Well, well, yeah, and, their, not, and their involvement or non-involvement. We, we have not declared war on Yemen, that's for sure. But we know that uh, al, al moved the Al-Qaeda network to Yemen. He was the operational head, and that is their major base. And mm -hmm. they are the most dangerous network that we face today of Al-Qaeda. They've basically moved from Afghanistan al to Yemen. So uh, you, you, this is a war without borders. It's There's a global question. war. Has al Laki's death removed the number one terrorist threat to the United States, Pat Buchanan? No, I still think it's probably Zawahiri is probably running the top thing. But there's no doubt this guy is a major voice and he's a local operative. How many months will it last before, before al Zawahiri I, I is, is given the same treatment? The way we're going, I think right. the president could very well, or our, our SEAL Team 6 or he's, somebody's going to get him. He's hot, right? right. He's hot. <laughs> If I were him, I'd yeah. stay on the move. Yeah, if I were him, I'd be nervous, too. Uh, yeah. this, is, this is an important victory in the war against al-Qaeda. Um, uh, Liz. Well, and as I would say, I think it probably would help the president, particularly in terms of countering this um, 
image of weakness that had right. been developing in recent months and that has been very unhelpful uh, to Obama. And so I think to the extent that he can get a bump out of this politically, uh, that would be good. But as Eleanor said earlier, it's the economy, stupid. And but you think it's a bigger bump than what Liz, Liz is describing? No, I don't. Uh, I think this country is overwhelmed by the problems of the economy and joblessness and a sense that the economy is really still sliding. That's by far and away the number one issue, seizing the American public, and rightly in my judgment. He needs a war, and he's got a war going, the well, war on terror. This is not no. going to... This is not going to... This can win him a, a re-election. I don't this know about that, but there, there, this is big there, and there are 25 million people who are either unemployed or un forgotten. unemployed. I don't know about that. 25 this million people. Within three months, he's going to pick off the final big three you know, of Al-Qaeda. Yeah. Don't you understand? Yeah. Good luck, John. Yeah, look what happened after they killed Osama bin Laden. He got a tiny little bump in the polls That's for a right. couple of this, you days. Where well, you have 46 million people in this country living in poverty, 25 million people underemployed or unemployed, that is going to be the overwhelming issue, and we're going to be adding to those numbers, alas, in the next year. You cannot, unless you have credibility on that issue, he's going to have a great the, deal of difficulty. The fact that he's eliminated, if not eliminated, that he has greatly reduced the danger of the war on terror is going to be a big credit when people consider his re-election. Well, and it's quite remarkable that over this period, including that of, of uh, Bush and Cheney, and including uh, Clinton even further back, it, that this country has been has right. been spared this. It removes right. what would otherwise be an impediment to his re-election. Republicans certainly can't go after him as being soft on terrorism. Issue two, numbers don't lie, right? If all of you are willing to press on with me, I promise you, I promise you we will remind the world why America is the greatest nation on earth. God it's bless official. God bless the United States. President Obama is in full campaign mode. The U.S. presidential election is now 13 months away. He will need every day of those 13 months to dig himself out of a deep political ditch, many believe. Barely one-tenth of the U.S. population believes the country is on the right track. 11%. That's the lowest right track figure for a president in his first term since Jimmy Carter, who lost his re-election bid to Ronald Reagan in 1980. Mr. Obama's approval rate was as low as 38%. With only 13 months until the election, there may not be enough time to turn the tide. That could mean that the Democrats lose not only the White House, but also their six-seat majority in the U.S. Senate. With Republicans already in control of the House of Representatives, that ABB, fervor, anybody but Barack, would mean a complete Democratic shutout from power. Question, in his attempt to turn around his political ratings, is time on the side of President Obama? Liz Marlantis. Probably not. Um... I think if you talk to the White House these days, they are pretty resigned to the fact that the economy is probably not going to do them any favors over the next 13 months. And so what that means is that they're not going to be able to run a Ronald Reagan style, things are getting better, look how much progress we've made type campaign. What that leaves them with probably is more of what they like to call a contrast campaign, mm -hmm. which really means they're going to be running against whoever the Republican Congress nominee is. I was a speechwriter. Did you design that city on a hill? You remember that? No, he <laughs> Shining city he on a hill? He had that long before I arrived. He had that in 1964 back then. But, but Liz is right here. John, the, the numbers are so bad for the president. What he's got to do and what they're going to do is run and say, look, we inherited a bad situation. It's not as good. But for heaven's sakes, don't go back to where we were. The Tea Party Republicans represent a threat a menace to this country. They're crazy, and they're going to try to frighten the daylights out of the American people by ha hopefully having some Republican candidate they can demonize. Well, right now, Obama's right. worst rival is himself, the Obama of 2008, mm -hmm. and he's being compared to all the promise and the energy and the hope that ushered him into office. Once a real candidate emerges on the other side, then there will be some comparison. And the president is out there now campaigning around the country, trying to shame the Congress or force the Congress, compel the Congress into acting on his jobs bill. And if they don't, then uh, the hope is that people will see uh, where the blame lies, at least in part, for the failure of the economy to recover. Do you think the American people have already forgotten what happened about a year ago, that the House of Representatives was turned upside down? and Republicans now run it, and also the majority vote, Democratic vote, 
in the Senate was lost. They have the Senate, but they don't have the majority vote. No, no I, don't majority. I don't think. I don't think this is the way the American public thinks about what's going on in current events. What happened to an election two years ago, or even four years ago? They look to the leader of the country, and it is the president always, mm -hmm. to solve the problems of the country. We have not only not solved the problem, which is the major problem facing this country. It's gotten a lot worse mm -hmm. when you have 46 million people in poverty by the government standards, and 25 million people who are not working or underworking and no permanent jobs being created, the country is going to be up in arms over this yeah. thing. And somehow or other, they're going to look for somebody to, to have so a different gonna, approach. So we're going to have a repeat of what happened last year? Uh, I believe uh, we will, I because I believe will. this economy huh? is going to continue to be bad. The Republican slogan is, he made it worse. Right. The Republicans have done everything, everything they can to bring about a dysfunctional political system, and then they're pointing at Bar Barack Obama what? and saying, what? see, well, he can't well, fix it. Yeah, it's a that's very one cynical interpretation. strategy. And that's a very cynical strategy. Blame the Republicans. The Republicans. The Republicans. Yes. 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 Issue is three, don't <laughs> fence me in. Oh, give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Don't fence me in. The idea that you're going to build a wall from Brownsville to El Paso and go left for another uh, 800 miles to Tijuana is just not reality. Texas Republican governor and Republican presidential candidate Rick Perry is in the crosshairs of his own party. Governor Perry has been slammed by fellow presidential Republican contenders and the GOP rank and file who accuse him of being too liberal in his immigration ideas. They particularly cite Perry's opposition to building a border fence along the U.S.-Mexico border, which spans, by the way, 2,000 miles. 2,000 miles of projected fence. Perry says the answer to border security is boots on the ground and assets in the air. There's not anybody on this stage that's had to deal with uh, the issue of border security more than I have. The 1,200 miles of, of Texas and Mexico and uh, our federal government has been an abject failure at securing our border. We've had to spend some $400 million of Texas taxpayer dollars to send Texas Ranger recon teams down there. Uh, strategic fencing in the uh, uh, metropolitan areas absolutely has uh, a role to play. You gotta have 4,500 Border Patrol agents trained up, 1,500 National Guard troops. You gotta have the aviation assets in the air putting real-time information down to the law enforcement. But that's not enough for fellow Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney, who delivered this slam at Perry. I think if you're opposed to illegal immigration, it doesn't mean that you don't have a heart. It means that you have a heart and a brain. Question, did Perry's position on immigration cost him the top slot in Florida's straw poll, which occurred uh, this past week? Well, I'm sure it, ha it affected him, but I have to say, since I've flown along that fence, and I've watched, we've, I flew there through a, an entire night, and you see people climbing the fence, it's almost impossible to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them get captured, they get uh, uh, bussed back to uh, Mexico, and then they come the next day. Even the fence won't work, so, but to put a fence is just ridiculous. In that sense, he's right. But there's no doubt, but there's a better way, once again, of how he presents those issues. Okay. And that's one, it shows what, in a sense, his limited political skills let's are make nationally. A, let's make another clarification to. The fence can run all the way over to Tijuana, right. which means below Nevada right. and uh, really effectively right. across Calif the width of right. California. It's not going to no. work. But I don't care how that's long the one, fence that's is. That's one mileage uh, computation. Another mileage is you stop under Texas and you go all the way out to the Gulf. <laughs> Now, yeah. which, what, what is the 2,000, and how much is the, it's well, about how much, eight, it's how about about the mileage of the big fence? I think the, 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 it's 2,000 miles from all the way from Brownsville to San Diego, right. the Texas has a little more than half. Brownsville is it's where the Texas it's, it's empties out miles in from Texas. Mexico. Yeah, Matamoros okay. is Okay, Brownsville over to where? Tijuana? No, no. no, all the way to San Diego. Tijuana, San Diego. Tijuana, okay, Tijuana is out there. I know, I know. I've been through there <laughs> right. several I've times. I've been down there many, many times, John, on that thing. It can be have done. You, have you? Have sure, I went down there in 1992 and 96. 
where they had this corrugated stuff that was put up in San Diego. They, 11 miles, they blocked everybody and from coming you spend in. Time, and, and you spent time in Tijuana? You go across the border? In 68, when I was with Nixon Pat, in California. What kind, what kind of, a, what time Pat, of a, good, a good time did you have there? Well, you talked to Dick Allen, my good well, friend. Pat, Pat, went, Pat went down there as a presidential candidate saying, you know, push back the, uh, the Mexicans yeah. coming across the border. Governor Perry is right on this issue, and if right. he gets the nomination, his position would, would, will be much better uh, in a general election. You've, you won't seen, get you've the seen the light. Exit yes, question. Right. Is Rick Perry's the GOP's best hope of taking the Latino vote from the president? Uh, yes or no? One word. No. Uh, listen, Perry has lost the nomination because of this. Well, he may lose the nomination, but Quickly. if he gets into the race, he'll, he'll get some Hispanic votes. Oh, won't take think him his away immigration from, position he won't appeal to right. the Hispanic. Not, Absolutely, not as good it as will. President Absolutely, President. Absolutely, it will. Absolutely, it will. Absolutely, it will. It will appeal to the Hispanic community. So this has solidified his positive vote in the in the Hispanic, Hispanic community. I agree with Martin, and I agree with that proposition. Issue four: Economics of immigration. Are they good enough? Do good economics outweigh immigration's downsides? The answer, yes. Item, innovation. For every 1% increase in college-educated immigrants, there is an increase in patents for new products of 15%. Item, entrepreneurship. Over the past 16 years, immigrants have co-founded more than half of all computer tech firms in Silicon Valley. Item, growth. Immigrants earn more than half of all engineering doctorates. They dominate the engineering field, which is responsible for more than 50% of the U.S. economic growth. Question, what are the counter arguments to claims that immigration is a great positive for the economy? More? Uh, I can't think of one, frankly, because these are the people in the industries that where we have a chance to grow the economy, which is not the industrial economy any longer. It is in the high-tech world. It is in the engineering world. It's in the web-based business. It, these are the people whom we have to hold in this country. They're critical to what we're doing. We have a shortage of these people. It is absolutely essential that we find a way to keep more of them. We had 195,000 H-1B visas in the year 2000. It's down to 65,000 now. That is ridiculous. These are people who want to stay here. These are people we What's shouldn't What's an h one Every other, that's a visa is given to, 50%, by the way, of the hard sciences in the graduate degrees are, are foreign students. They can get a degree based on that mm -hmm. uh, uh, qualification. We had, as I say, 195,000 in the year two. We've reduced it to 65,000. It's preposterous, absolutely preposterous. Uh, uh, the Treasury Department, let me get this out, Pat. Individuals who are not authorized to live in the United States paid how much in refundable credits? Illegal aliens legally collect more in the credits annually than is paid by illegals in total income tax receipts. What's the amount of money that, was co that the Treasury says was collected? I don't even understand what you read. <laughs> <laughs> How much John, the, the let, immigrants are talk, paying to the Treasury, which I John, see is $4.2 billion in refundable John, credits. John, look, we've got between 9 or 11 and 20 million illegal aliens in this country. Overwhelming majority of them pay no income taxes. They consume benefits from the great society. As for the engineers and the others, yeah, there's no doubt there's some very able and good people coming to this country. Immigrants can be wonderful. We've got millions of Americans who have studied science and engineering who are out of work. They are fellow Americans, right. and the jobs ought to go to them first. I think you ought to cap immigration right. until unemployment falls to 6%. Well, I don't, I don't uh, think they're crowding out jobs that Americans want, and I think we should give them credit for doing a lot of, of, of the jobs uh, at the low end of the rungs of the income ladder. Let Liz in here. Well, I just was going to say that earlier, you know, when we were talking about Perry's immigration problem, we didn't raise the real problem that he's having, which has to do with his decision to allow children of illegal immigrants to pay in-state tuition in Texas. And that has been a huge problem for him already this week. He's getting protests um, at his campaign events because it's a position that's just anathema to many in the conservative party. Yeah, but there are 13 other states that have that position. It may be anathema to a small sliver of the Republican about? Party. Hillary backed off the, the position Act, of driver's the license. Dream Act, the Dream Act, uh, which is where the ch children, people who were brought here as children. Let me get this okay. in, please. It's not John. only Texas, it's 13 other states. Uh, kindly relinquish. Okay, the new Colossus. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless. 
tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Sure. sure. Who was that quotation from? It's Emma Lazarus, and she wrote a poem which was put into the Statue of Liberty. Right. However, a number of years later, she wrote that around 1883, I think, and I think it was put in after 1900. But the Statue of Liberty was initially, John, it wasn't about immigration. It was from France to the United States on our 100th anniversary. It was about liberty. Well, my parents came through Ellis Island, and um, I think this is a country of immigrants, and I think we should prize the immigrants, the energy that they bring to the system. It's still fair mm -hmm. enough to want to control our borders, but we, yeah, but we have a lot well, of people here illegally who've been working hard, and we can't just <sighs> expel well. them. What do you think about Emma Lazarus and her statement? Give me a tide, you're poor, you're weary. It's one that speaks to everybody. And, and what I was going to say before about Perry's position is I think it would help him probably in the general election if he can get there. But right now in the conservative wing of the Republican Party, it's a position that is just really, really tough and it is hurting him. It's a killer. Predictions, Pat. Metastasizing Solyndra scandal, John, I think is going to grow and it's going to take down the uh, energy secretary of uh, President Obama. What's his name? Mr. Chu. Well, Stephen Chu has said it's his fault and he's taken the blame. So I guess if you follow up, he might resign. What's your prediction? Or would you rather you also be burned at Quickly, the Quickly, Eleanor. No, no, prediction. Be uh, What's your prediction? Prediction is that the just Obama's <laughs> Justice Department took the uh, asked for a health care ruling from the Supreme Court because they're nervous that they're not going to be in office. He's trying to distract you. A year you. and a half from now. <laughs> you know he's trying to distract you. He wants you to, to quit your uh, prediction. I know. Well, what, what's your prediction? <laughs> Quickly. That after his very public flirtation this week, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie decides that alas, he is not going to enter the race. Yes, the poverty problems in the United States is going to result in a major drop in Obama's support in the Hispanic community by at least 30, per po 30 points. Christie will not run. Bye bye. If for such a small word, it packs a wallop. If I live to 100, if Social Security isn't enough, if my heart gets broken, if she says yes. We believe if should never hold you back. If should be managed with a plan that builds on what you already have. Together, we can create a personal safety net, a launching pad for all those brilliant ifs in the middle of life. You can call on our expertise and get guarantees for the if in life. After all, we're MetLife.